Tonight on Let It Rip, presidential politics on the picket line. The companies were in trouble, but now they're doing incredibly well. And guess what? You should be doing incredibly well, too. I'm here tonight to lay out a vision for a revival of economic nationalism and our automobile manufacturing lifeblood which they're sucking out of our country. Two people who couldn't be more opposite politically, and today is no exception. President Biden encouraging workers to stay the course. Former President Trump trying to take the buzz out of the charge when it comes to electrifying too quickly. How the visits will impact negotiations and their campaigns. The debate starts now. Time now to let it rip with former majority leader of the Michigan House, Rocky Rutschkowski, former Democratic Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence, Michigan Capital Confidential Managing Editor James David Dixon, Detroit School Board Member Sherry Gay Dagnago, and Fox 2 anchor and attorney Charlie Langton here with us always. By the way, I know what his secret to staying up for all these hours is. I watched him drink some of the cold coffee that yeah. we had in the newsroom. You're ready to let her rip as oh, well. In more ways than one. That's well, right. Yes, absolutely. Well, so it's a 15-minute segment. We'll give you a break. Break. But in the meantime, there's one guy who's not taking a break, and it's former President Trump. He is in town, of course, tonight, speaking uh, not to union workers, but instead to non-unionized worker workers at a place called Drake, which makes gear shifts and levers. Rocky Rajkowski, uh, probably the most electrophobic place in the country, could be Drake, because they would be the first to lose a lot of business if we go electric too quickly. Is this a smart place for former President Trump to show up to? I think so, too. And something uh, I'd like to correct is, is there will be union members at Drake as well. They just won't be work. Uh, well, be protesting. They're, they're, they're no, saying that Drake is not a union shop, but they welcome union members. Listen, last election, President Trump garnered about 45 percent of the union vote of the UAW, and the reason why he's here in Michigan is because electrification is going to cut, and nobody, nobody can test this. It's going to cut UAW jobs because a normal combustion engine has about 16,000 parts, average 16 to 18,000 parts in it. But now an electric engine, an electric vehicle is going to have about 6,000, 7,000 Rocky, 7, let's talk about who's in attendance less here. less people. At, at Drake, 500 plumbers, yeah. pipe fitters, electricians, and yes, all, all workers. Unions. And that's true. Yeah. But the, Charlie Langton is out with the UAW workers who are striking against the big three. Former, uh, the, the current president was with those workers just yeah. yesterday. Why isn't former President Trump lacing up his shoes and walking the picket lines with workers who actually have a beef with the big three. And that's because he wasn't invited, number one. The Secret Service has to clear it just like they had to for Joe Biden, but he wasn't invited. Why Sean wasn't he invited? Because Sean Fain has a control over those lines, and he's not going to cross Sean Fain. Nobody's crossing Sean Fain now. Former Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence, yes. when you take a look at the optics here, I have to ask you about President Biden. He, he basically spoke for just a few moments. He found the closest place to the airport you could possibly find, which is a facility <laughs> in Belleville. Yeah. He hopped off Air Force One, got on a loud the megaphone, and then left. But, is this just showed up. but is this just symbolism? He showed up, and he walked, wore a union hat to show. And what is, what is a picket line? A picket line is the physical message that we are not going to tolerate this and we are resisting our, our contract. So the President of the United States joined them in that march. He is the President of the United States. I heard criticism coming in today on one of the major channels that we, he needs to be in D.C. trying to get the budget passed. But, you know, he took the time, which is a period of time right now when there's so many things going on, to prove to the country that I'm with these union but workers. But how, do you, tell, how do you tell people that Trump you're with workers? First. How do you tell people you're with workers when the very thing that so many of these workers have told us mm -hmm. is that they're weary and afraid of getting electric too quickly? They're afraid for their jobs. Yet the very person who's pushing these jobs to go electric is standing in front of them. Yeah, do you think they, do you think, I mean, they're smart enough to see through that, right? Electric vehicles, you remember there was a time we had horse and buggies, then we had combustion engines. It is the progression of technology. AI, name your, name your, you know, food that they're making in, in cylinders instead of growing it in the ground. 
technology is moving. Some of us resist it. I know I have a hard time with technology still, but we cannot resist it. And that should be part but of the Brenda. contract. Invest in training. Well, let's, 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 let's let James David Dixon chime in. Robin, we'll get back to you in a moment. Yeah. James, a little bit about what you're hearing right now. Set the stage in your mind for us when you look at this situation. The former president talking to a non-unionized shop to unionized workers, but not on the picket lines or anywhere near them. Will he be saying the things that the workers who are walking the picket lines want to hear? It sounds like a lot of those workers already responded to him last election. He was not invited to the UAW, so he didn't do that. Uh, but no, part, of me, part, of, part of me thinks he should have done it anyway. Just show up anyway and, and show you know that you value those workers, you value those votes as well, and that maybe your message to them resonates more than the one that President Biden would give. But James, in 2008, Agreed. people aren't forgetting that former President Trump said that the workers, these UAW workers, are costing the big three too much, and he blamed the downturn of the auto industry mm -hmm. on the shoulders of those workers. How does he then show up to say, I support you? Well, in 2008, wait a minute, he was a Democrat, if I'm not mistaken. Well, hold so on. He was a but in 2008, he, he, did, he did blame the auto downturn yeah, right. on these Democrat. workers. How does the same person show up? I think Donald Trump has said a lot of everything about yeah. a lot of different yeah. types of people. Yeah. And so that's all baked into the cake. And it was baked into the cake when about 40% of those people supported him. That's right. Uh, and and it, I, I could see why the UAW would want Biden to come to the line. He's the president right now. What doesn't make sense is treating Trump like he could never be president again. That's Sh entirely Sherry, possible. Sherry, there are many well people said. who say that the rank and file are going to vote for Trump. The union leadership, like Fain, uh, will vote for Biden. But the people who work in these factories mm -hmm. voted for Trump before many of them did, and many of them will go back and do the same thing. Do you believe that? Well, so I, I have to say this. As a staunch labor supporter, when I entered the House, served six years, uh, worked closely with even the late Rep. Gary Glenn, the person, the architect of right to work, I actually attended his funeral recently, but I was shocked to learn in speaking at a number of labor events just how many Republicans there are that are a part of the labor rank yeah. and file. It actually shocked me uh, because I thought it, it was all blue and th true. Uh, and so uh, seeing the numbers that, that Trump received, um, I don't think we can discount that. And I think sometimes when we put blinders on and pretend uh, that, that, that the circumstances are a lot differently, we put ourselves in a place where we can actually lose because we're well, underplaying. Hillary, Hillary Clinton would probably attest to what you're saying after she kind of thought that she had Very Michigan well by the tail and she didn't have it. Charlie Langton, you're on the ground with these guys and gals each and every day. These are hardworking, smart people. Are they seeing through this? I know yesterday you said this is a historic visit, but I challenged you on the air and said historic, but totally political. Totally political. And that's why I take a different position than everybody. I think both should stay away from the union. Legally, they have, the president can't order these workers no, back. This isn't the railroad, Nothing. right. This is not a railroad, so they have no power. This is an absolute political moment. These union workers are smart. They've been through a lot. They need more money. And when these people now are being used, I think, as pawns yes. by both the Democrats and the Republicans, get them out of this thing and get back to the bargaining table, where both of these, all workers should be right now. Get a We are in a period of time where the expectation of elected officials are different. It, yes, it's Correct. political, yeah. but politics is in everything. And he needed to show up because, you know, he's For fighting. Him. He For fight, Biden, he, yes. It's got yes. nothing to do with the he wants though. the endorsement. Let's talk about that endorsement. Go ahead, James, did you want to say something From a tactical first? standpoint, though, uh, you could say, for lack of a better word, that the UAW played their Trump card. They got Biden to the line. He made history in, in a 90-second speech, wait a minute, apparently. Wait a minute. Why not? I'm going so to disagree. To the line, but, now disagree what? For a but now what? Because unless he comes to that negotiation table and speaks for 87 seconds, doesn't really matter, you does know what? it? I'm, for the first time, I think I'm going to disagree with you now. 
because I don't think the UAW brought him brought Biden to the to the line. It was Trump that oh, brought please, Biden to the line please. because Trump announced that he was coming out. Believe and when Trump me. announced he could hold on, out, hold on. The, 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 Rocky, Rocky, the, the Joe Biden, before Joe Trump Biden was president, you know. before President Biden was President Biden, he's been with unions before. Yes. Yeah, but he, he is, wouldn't yes. have come to the line. We don't know that you because know he's that. a huge union supporter. You know, and by the way, after Trump announced, he announced. But whether or not that's true, let me ask you about Trump. true. Well, hold on. But what about Trump? Uh, the UAW is saying, look, we're not endorsing anybody just yet. Mm -hmm. These two visits happen. Does the UAW take the temperature of the rank and file to see who they no, support? No, I don't think so. How, who, who do they endorse in the I end? I think they're going to, in the end, they're going to have to, at least the, from my perspective, and I should ask the, the ladies, for, actually, because this is more in your wheelhouse, but I, from my outsider point of view, I think that they have nowhere to go but with Biden, at least the leadership. The rank and file will do whatever from they want to do. lips to God's ears. Well, so, 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 Sherry, go ahead. So, what, happens, so, what happens with the rank and file so, versus the leadership? So, of the I think Sean Fain's in, in a very unique position. I mean, becoming yes. the new president, uh, checking the temperature, like you said, Rocky, with uh, the, the leadership. Certainly, the political thing to do would be to move forward in endorsing President Biden ultimately. But I hope that they will get some more negotiation out of it and making sure that they call on the auto industry to, that yes. they've been bailed out time and time again to really pay their their fair share. So an endorsement before the president really speaks with strength on those issues and really help to negotiate on those issues is premature. Um, but I, I do say right. this. Right. I think I that 40-some percent that is in support of Trump, Sean has to think about uh, being the new president. We brought you in because we wanted something drastically different. And so many of them will be at odds. And I don't think as a new president coming in the way he came in, I'm he'd be willing sure, to risk but that sure, We're talking about a president that didn't come on. With, I'm with talking great, about Sean. Sean Fain, yes. with, great, with great fanfare. Sean Fain won by essentially 500 votes Handful. with only with only little over 10% who voted for this guy. Mm -hmm. So if you really think about it, he has a lot to prove and a lot to lose. That's, exactly. My question to you is, did he gain all of the, the, the value and, and the support from his rank and file through what he's done in the last three weeks? I say with taking the strike, absolutely. I was out there at Hard Plaza. We marched down Jefferson. Uh, the energy, the people were there. The rank and file was excited about this fight. They wanted somebody with strength, somebody that would stand up and not just take the, the easy way out. And I think Sean has demonstrated that. Yeah, he's absolutely. been strong. He needs a contract. Yes, he's, he's, he's been strong. strong. He's, he's, a strong leader. Leader. he's got to get a contract. He, he is transitioning leader. because of the equality issue. There's no one that understands 400% more earnings than the people who are making the product. It's it's out of whack. But he's a strong so, leader for the UAW. Absolutely. He's, he's that fantastic. strike was we're gonna, needed. We're going to continue this, this topic that is so important as we have this historic week here in the great city of Detroit where labor lives and breathes and is on the line right now for many reasons. We're going to be talking about this as former President Trump's visit to Metro Detroit is big news any day. But what makes it even bigger, the fact that he's here instead of debating his fellow GOP candidates for president. We're diving into whether the impact will be positive, negative, or will it even matter? Let it rip rolls right along. Back now, let it rip, diving right back into the latest on the UAW strike, along with Rocky Rajkowski and Brenda Lawrence, public relations guru and Democratic commentator Greg Bowens, and Oakland County GOP executive board member Aaron Tobin are here. So is our Fox 2 anchor and attorney Charlie Langton. All right, let's get to this. Uh, we have um, former President Trump in town. Aaron, I'll begin with you uh, on this side on this one. How much of an impact does that make? when the rank and file who aren't in that room at Drake, which is a non-unionized shop, how much of an impact does that make on a worker? So I saw a great report on, on Fox 2 News that they were interviewing people on the, on the, on the lines, on the strikes. So the, the lady said, you know, we got to strike because we need more money because the economy's just horrible. Inflation's going crazy. Whose fault is that? It's Joe Biden. All these people that voted for President Trump, these, these guys on the line, they know that it was great under Trump. We had a great e economy. We had great. Our 401ks were performing wonderful. But we when had you, world peace. Aaron, better when, you take now. A, when you take a look at the, mm. the what happened yes, they are. during during the Trump presidency, the auto industry did well under the first year. Of course, it then started declining, and then during COVID, it just basically collapsed. Under, mm -hmm. It was under Biden's watch, where the auto industry popped back up. Don't you think these workers know that? They know what uh, Obama did to them. They know that Obama and Biden told them, "You're going to take cuts." cuts they still have not recovered from, and you can't strike for 10 years. What do you think of that, UAW? And the UAW said, 
all right, fine. Now they want that money back, which does, they deserve. But, but, and we'll get they to our other panel. They're getting a bad does, deal right now. But does now. the UAW, do the, a UAW member realize that Donald Trump is a billionaire who, in 2008, blamed the downfall of the autos <laughs> on the UAW workers asking for more money? Do they, they remember that? When that? Trump was president, they could go fill up a shopping cart for $50, and now that same shopping cart is $80 to $90. These people, a lot of them are 150. living... 150 150 okay. A lot of these people are living... Check to check. They understand under President Trump, he, his policies had a, a booming economy and world peace. We don't have that now. All right, Greg Bowens, uh, the, the other big, it's not an elephant mm -hmm. at all in the room. It's being revved up quite a bit, the, the buzz around electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you've talk, you and I have talked quite about a, a bit about this, but I have to ask you, <coughs> these UAW workers feel threatened, and they should, by the fact that electrification is being pushed at a rate that perhaps is too quick and could put them out of work. Don't these workers realize Ain't nobody that, thinking about that. You know what, today? You don't think the it's, workers it's, are thinking about it's that? It's raining outside right now. Pouring down raining, it's late at night, it's dark and it's cold. There are people out there walking on the picket line. Do you think they give a doggone about an electric car right now? Greg, no, it's in the, they don't. It's, it's in one of the they, five no, 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 asks. No, 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 hold on. One of, one of the asks that Sean Fain has in the thing is actually about, it's about if we go electric, do we have the right to strike? That is on their minds. You know, come on, I'm going to help you get out of the rabbit hole that Rocky and this guy over here throw you down <laughs> every time they try I'm and make, questions a, to both make, sides, make, Greg. A, make a, oh. a false comparison here. These folks right now are out because they need to make more money. They've seen the increases that the CEOs have gotten, a 40% average, and it's not fair. You got people starting on the line making $15, $16 an hour, a two-tier wage system. Two -tier. It's ridiculous. You have benefits that have been slashed where you have a 401k, a piss-poor, sorry 401k, as opposed to a good pension that they used to have. Now, these things were taken Which away over. These things Obama were taken Obama made them give I'm up. I'm sorry. Before we go back to crazy land over here. That's uh, let historical me finish, let fact. Me you can my call point. it what you want. Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish your point. Uh, your point. The, uh, uh, these issues are real, and they're not worried about an electric car being made 10 years down the road at a plant. They're worried about how can they make ends meet now. And I have people that live across the street from me, this young family, husband, wife, two young kids. They both work at Stellantis. They could give a god darn about an electric car and a battery. What they're talking about right now is getting some equity and having the ability to do what but, we got to do Brenda Lawrence, in this it, thing. It, and it, I, I, I got to say, I'm the only person on this stage that's been on strike. I know what it's like. And so when you say that it's only a photo op, that it's only for optics, it matters, man, to have somebody show up and say, I am with you. What's happened? What, Greg, did, what I, was I, accomplished? What, do? what was accomplished? Do you know what, what it was is? It, what was you accomplished? Know these, you know what? These workers, I agree with you, actually, on this one. Yeah, it's about said. money. This great pension. You know what? If you work 30 years at General Motors, you'll get about a $1,500 pension. And if you retire too early, your Social Security will be reduced. And it's taxable anyway. And you get no medical benefit. Right. Even the tier one workers who have spent 30 years at General Motors mm -hmm. and Stellantis and Ford, it's a terrible pension, and they gave up a lot and to get that. It's about money. Get the job done. Get a contract. These union workers you need know more money. No, I want to yeah. ask Brenda Lawrence something, because if, if you want to say that they don't care about electric, let me tell you what they definitely don't care about. Politicians putting their flag in the ground that, on absolutely. their backs. And I think absolutely. that, man, when I was right, 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 that is that is that is that is that the flag in the ground. It's more than that. Yeah. Why it's, is it more than that? Because he, the next step I say that he needs to do is call the heads of those automotive companies, sit them down, and say, this is a time you need to put your uh, put some money in these workers' pockets. You've taken care of yourself, and now you need to take care of them. This is about money. But why it's doesn't not President about Biden do that in lieu of showing up for 82 seconds of a loud horn? Isn't that more important? And by the way, but the you same bring, go, you bring the, the same world's goes, attention to <laughs> the issue when you do that. He brings the world, the world was already because, watching. No, no, no. The, the world, world was, was already no, watching. No, 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 no. You Every night the LA, newscast you know what, was you know airing what they're worried about in LA? The writer strike and the actor strike. You know what they're worried about in other? 
other places, what's going on there? It's national you news, Greg. Bring, I know it's national news. I'm actually kind of agreeing with Greg on this one because, look, politically speaking, you have Josh Hawley, a Republican, a conservative Republican, going to to walk the picket line in Missouri in his in his John own state. James, Bruce, John Lee. James and others, and and you're starting to see it because they realize exactly what you said. The but, issue but it's about is the real. But my point here. Hold on one second, guys. My point is this. It was last week that NBC Nightly News and ABC World News Tonight in our newsroom at the same time that we were talking about the strike here in Detroit yeah. spent six and a half minutes at the top of their show before any president or presidential candidate like Trump was in town. What I'm saying is what Charlie had echoed earlier, which is these workers deserve more than political speak. They deserve more than a campaign but on their why back. Do, why do they want the, the president to, to show up when there's a hurricane or when there's a disaster? He's, he's doing his job sending the money, but they want him to show up. Up, to see that you stand with me, you understand, you see me. That you care. And so, so it so is does, important. So does former President Donald Trump, Rocky, care about UAW workers? Hell or does he care no. more about his votes? I, I, I think he cares about Excuse the me. votes. And he does Excuse care me. in the big scheme of things. I think DeSantis, I think Nikki Haley, I'll even say Biden and RFK. I think they all, deep inside, have to care something. There's got to be some shred to run for political office, not just ego, but there's got to be some shred that you've got to care about what your legacy is going to be. So, yeah, I think he cares. But it, I truly believe that President Trump had a epiphany somewhere around 2015 when he became a conservative. He only saw one path to the White House, and that was through the Republican Party, and he chose a conservative path. And that conservative path was a populist conservative path that put workers for the first time ever on the Republican Party but platform. Look, these workers can't even buy the cars they're making. That's right. right. And so if we want to get legislation, if Congress wants to come it's about in equity. and well, help let's these not talk people, about equity. Equality. maybe, or <laughs> <laughs> tariffs, uh, increase tariffs on foreign cars, I mean, there are some things that Congress could do here, uh, but it involves foreign policy if you really want to get into this. But just to come it's up and say, and, and say, walk for a couple minutes, I, I'm, so, I'm not in so let's but, talk but, about that. You, you have to put pressure on the people at the top. Don't you think that the CEOs of all those companies were looking at President Biden going there and hearing that this is the first time? Biden, I think and I trying, think they and trying, the and trying, totally and trying to, and trying to understand what Biden. that let, means, let, let Greg finish. Go and ahead. trying to understand what that means for them. The country bailed out GM. Biden was a part of that. They understand the power of the presidency and the government when it comes to this what stuff. Did Biden and do let, today? So what did Biden and, say? Let's talk about that for a moment. Biden, we have a minute. According to what he was saying, Aaron, one moment, please. Aaron, Aaron, Mr. Biden, the president, said that it was on your backs that these the two of the three automakers got bailed out. It was on your backs. If you don't believe that a symbolic visit was enough, if you listen to what he said, did it resonate with workers? Is what he's saying true? It was on the backs of the very workers that the president was marching in front of that these two <laughs> autos came back. Is that true? Listen, you can't have the they other companies lot, without right? the workers. But they gave up yeah, a but, lot. Right? But wait they a minute. gave up a lot because they were forced to by Obama and Biden. And let's they not put forget. The screws to let's the UAW. Forget. Joe Biden, supposedly the best friend to the union, just destroyed the railroad union by saying you can't strike you got to get back to work and force but, them for a horrible wait a minute. let's not forget situation. it was the workers and there's more workers than executives but there were bondholders and there were salaried employees that live in Auburn Hills and all around Macomb County that lost with Delphi with General Motors with with then but Chrysler. the reality is today those workers did they Everybody gave lost. up a lot the workers did and the retirees but lost the, but True. the CEOs think, did not listen, and that's what say, this in, is about 2020, okay. President Trump, or President Biden, won four out of the ten. Actually, it was Trump who won four out of the ten union votes. That's right. And I think Biden knows that. I think Trump knows that. And, and I think it was important, all obviously, for them to show up. Let, me give, you, let me give you another statistic. On the other that's side, you're, you're, with you're final wrong. thoughts. You can please have that thought. We're going to have it. On the other side of the break, we're going to listen to Greg oh, with his final thoughts and Charlie sticking the show on the road. We'll be right back. UAW is getting political. Biden and Trump, both in Michigan, to help? Do you think that a lot of these politicians are coming here for their own political good, or can they do something good for the union? 
Um, that's twofold. I mean, I think everybody has their own agendas. We're very excited to have Biden come and walk the picket line. Donald Trump's coming here. What do you think about that? Oh, I love it. I, I support him. President Sean Fain said Trump is a billionaire and he's just in it for the billionaire crowd. That's true. One speaks for our union, one speaks for our country. You've got on your line right here a lot of Trump supporters. What do you say to those people? Um, they're a little confused, Charlie. They're a little confused. Did President <laughs> Biden have any effect when he was out here? No. At this point, I'm per trying to stay apolitical. Uh, Democrats are incompetent and Republicans are insane. And here we are. 24 is going to be fun. 24 is going to be fun or it's going to be interesting. Uh, Greg, yeah, I was saying I'm, the only person on this stage that's been on strike has been me. I'm, after that, I've also helped unions settle their strikes, whether it was the musicians or the nurses up in Flint. And I can tell you what it's like to be out there late at night and trying to get support from the community for this. People think about nurses, oh, they're overpaid. They think about auto workers, oh, they, they're they, overpaid. We only have and, and the one statistic yeah. I wanted to say was support for unions is at 75% right now. That's what the latest poll shows. what's also interesting. It used to be at 49%. Half, half of them are Republicans. Seconds. Half of them are Democrats for the first time ever. Well, I think it's going to be an interesting race, and I think it's very fascinating to see how people think that one group's going to vote for yeah. one man or the other. I think the I think it's, about, will be at the it's polls. about the money. money I have been money, a wife of money. a striking worker, sure. yeah. and this is real. This is not a joke, and it's not political. I want to take take you I want to go over over and Trump don't even us. pay his own we people, so you know he don't care about burgers. We have to take a break and wrap right now. I want to thank our esteemed panel for joining us on Letter Rep. Have a good night. I want to continue the conversation right here.